Our people wake up. What's up, family and friends? Welcome to the Woke Nation, our nation of factual truth. Akinola, Ayola, you welcome. Good morning to you. Uh, this is where we encourage us to live our life and live it well through the knowledge of factual truth. It is your life, you have to live it. Enjoy your life. Okay. So I titled this Our Tradition and the Money. You know, I've been trying to figure out how to present this because when you look at our people, let me start with my own people, the Igbo people, you know, or the uh, Yoruba people and Hausa people and Igbo people. I don't like maybe like calling us Nigerians because we are not, okay? So, and this thing uh, affects every part of Africa. No matter whether you're from Ghana or whether you're from the West, East, North or South Africa, what I am saying apply to all of us. So, I'm talking about our tradition and the money. The, the, what we are supposed to mm, be asking when we hear that something is our tradition or when it comes to money is since when did this thing become our tradition? Since when did this thing become our money? But, you know, because of the pressure around us trying to de defeat poverty, you know, struggling to make it, hustling. We don't care to do those research to know about ourselves. We don't even know ourselves and our neighbor. When I mean our neighbor, like people from the West Africa don't know about people from the East Africa. People from the East Africa don't know about the people from West Africa. People from South Africa don't know about the people from North Africa. People from one part of Africa don't know other parts of Africa. It's simple because we are scattered people. That's we are like, like refugees. We are fleeing from war. We are fleeing from bad government. We are fleeing from poverty. We are fleeing from unnecessary pressures, you know, which our parents didn't take into record before they begin to produce us and, and then bear us. Not that they make us, at least to bear us. Because there are people there are certain people that are taking record of what is happening. They decided not to have children, which is wise decision. Because the children you are having now, you are having it for the system. But when you understand the circle of life and death, you will find that it's better for you to die childless, for you to have children that you, ha you, you live in the world you say is wicked, is evil. It's better you die childless. It's not a cause. Death is not a bad thing. Death is a great thing that can ever happen to you. How I wish it can happen to me right now, I drop dead. It's not a bad thing. Okay. So, wherever you're watching from, you know, I welcome you. 
So, Brandon, I will encourage you to join me. Whatever you know about Africa, African tradition, and the money, you know, how it's affecting us today. It's affecting us badly. It's not helping us at all. The so-called traditions we have and the so-called money we have in now is not helping us at all. It's a shameful thing that uh, Africa is a place that uh, people in America are still raising money to build school, do that. They, I say the school, we don't need that school in the first place because that school is part of our indoctrination. That's where they mess us up. Okay, see our native doctors and our people that say that they are traditionalists. The school your children are going, is it our traditional school? We're supposed to have our traditional school that, yeah, that's where we will school, we have exam. The government will approve it they, because they will recognize it. And it's the same thing they are teaching them, but we are teaching our own now in our own way. In African school, they are not teaching us African history. Can you imagine? They are not. What the some of us conclude, oh, our, we didn't, our ancestors did not write anything. You know, it was all our, our tradition, all our culture, they pass it down. No, we taught them how to write. We taught them how to write. How can you say your ancestors didn't write anything? Whatever they are writing, whatever they are building, whatever they are saying, we taught them. Their language came from them themselves. They came from you. Without you, there will be no white people. You are the original. I tell you, when I, since I think two days ago, I was talking, uh, when I started watching one Nigerian movie, that's where I get the inspiration to speak this, you know, about tradition and the money, how our people are saying this is our tradition, and the people with money, you know, can override it, can do things to do whatever, you know? Because when we are growing up, okay, when I get there, we talk about that, so let me not repeat myself. So since when, that tradition, you say, this is our tradition, this is our culture. Since when? Can you give me the date when it started? You can't because you don't want to find out all you believe is my forefathers was doing, my father, my father say, my mother say. No, you're supposed to know when they began, where, where they came from and when they started, what made them live wherever they were before. But our people, we lost touch of that. And it's well documented, these things I'm saying. But they taught us that, no, it's not documented. So that's why they give us the document they call Bible, Quran, Torah. And that's the document, that's where we see this is, the Bible is a historic, history book. Quran is, Quran is a history book. And yeah, when you read it, you see it's talking about what is happening today. But these people forgotten that Bible and Quran, Quran are plagiarized copy. Our ancestors had better books that they copied those things from. They change it and claim it's their own, begin to put names, dressing them up. You see how they tell you the word in the beginning was the word, and the word became flesh. You see, their God gave that word name that's above every other name. Imagine there are other names that have been in existence, but this one now their God gave them a name that's above every other name. And every knee will bow to that name. And they found out that even the kneel of their condition, the kneel of their suffering, is not bowing to this name. They still say it's bowing. Is working. <laughs> so you date. If you want to find out who is lying, go after date. Date this D A T E S. I don't mean going dating, you know, going on date with a woman or <laughs> dating. No, I don't mean date. Also, like dying or you know, that's D E A T H. I don't mean that one. I mean D A. T E S like you have today is um, on Wednesday, January fifth, twenty twenty two. That's what they say. Okay, the award it has lasted for twenty twenty two, but our own millions, thousands, and you can trace them back. Judaism is not a BC religion. Judaism is not a BC religion. No, and the Judaism is where Christianity copied from. That's why they take that uh, Hebrew book and call it Old Testament. And because their own religion don't have a script, don't have a book, then they said there is New Testament. Then they begin to marry that New Testament into Old Testament. I shared that video on my marriage and, um, and the relationship matter, which I will later edit and share here. 
they say, <clears throat> why the Jewish people don't believe in Jesus Christ? So the rabbi gave two examples. He said, number one, they don't believe in Jesus Christ because it contradicts Torah, which says that the word of God is eternal. And there's no place in the Old Testament God said that he will send his son to save anyone. And then the secondly, he said, for you to say that God will take the body of human, 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 or human being, he said, that's idolatry. <laughs> and that's where Christianity, but that's why sometimes when you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, we are Christians always used to say that, he said, he will bruise his head and he will his head. He's not talking about son of God. He said, her seed, that's the son of the woman, not son of man. But Jesus was called the son of man because Jesus was created by man. He's a created creature. Jesus never existed as a person in reality. Got it? He said, where do you get this thing from? It's on YouTube. There are everything you need to know about us. Even people that are revealing this thing to us are our brethren who are not living in Africa. Most of them are African Americans because they have what it takes to do the research and all that. They can travel, they travel in group to Egypt, Mali, other parts of Africa, Nigeria. But people in Africa, Africans in Africa, we don't even have money to travel to certain place in, in our own country. So I'm not talking of going to, you want me to secure visa or, or I mean, secure international passport or is it ECOWAS passport to go to Egypt? Go to do what? Uh -huh. Egypt is Africa. But they don't know that's where yeah, you can find your truth. You cannot find your truth in the Bible. You cannot find your truth in the Quran. You cannot find your truth in the Torah because they are fake. They are not BC book. But we have BC books a lot. Even the one written on the stone, we wrote on the stone before the Yahweh wrote on the stone. They were telling you what they learned from us. That's why when they want to say there are people, they say they went to Egypt. Everything Egypt, they keep going back to Egypt. Why they tell you, you know, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. They keep going to Egypt. Till today, they are going to Egypt. They tell you the Egyptian is still today, you shall see them no more. But when Jesus was born, where did God tell the, the where did God send the angel to tell Mary and Joseph to take Jesus to? Egypt. If the Old Testament said in Exodus chapter 14, it said the Egyptians is still today, you shall see them no more. There is no connection. In the book of Jeremiah, I think Jeremiah and Ezekiel, where he punished the people of Israel that said they are going to Egypt. <laughs> But when he went to burn his son, now it is in the world. In the world, he has power, he said, to fulfill the scripture. Out of Egypt, I call my son. It has Egypt. Egypt. Give birth. If you're looking for a savior, Egypt. You're looking for God, Egypt. Their God was from Egypt. That's black people. Exodus chapter 20, verse 21 is there. He was in the thick darkness. He was not in the light. He was not in the road. He was not anywhere else. But in Africa, black people, every God that is worshipped, every concept of God they have in the world today, they borrow it from Africans. Africans have all those things, but they weren't forcing it on anyone. You know, people, you know, when people now, people do things. And Africans are not people that are giving to killing people, mass destruction and all that. The weapons we are maybe making was not for war, fighting against one another. No, it's for hunting. The people that taught us war are war-like people. These evil people that have a evil mind, even if you have small quarrel with them, papa, they kill you. Our ancestors say that life is spring. Life is beautiful. The beauty of life is life itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, oh, nah, 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 nah. You think that we get the idea of living from book. That's what most of our people, especially the young generation, younger ones, you have younger, young siblings, if you are working, listen with them, you see how they talk, they still talk crazy as you used to talk. Our tradition and our money, since when? So I will read, I will read um, in a place. So welcome to Bible study. Now I have Bible knowledge. So I always use it to open the eyes of our people because they value the Bible as the proof. So I'm using the Bible to show them that, listen, number one, you're not following this Bible. 
and this Bible lied to you. I can show you the lies, the contradictions and all that to open your eyes because I have knowledge. I cannot read, uh, I mean, I cannot quote from Quran. I cannot read from Quran because I never studied Quran. I never read a verse that I brought Quran and open it and say, this is Quran. I read Bible. I prayed and read Bible from Genesis to Revelation more than 10 times, study it, write in my notes, or write them also footnote on it. I devote it so it become part of me. It's not miracle, it's not any gift. It's because I labored for it. You go for knowledge. That's how you get knowledge. God cannot give you knowledge. God cannot give you wisdom. God cannot give you understanding. So in Matthew chapter chapter six, chapter six, um, chapter six verse 24, it said, no man, say, no man can serve two masters. So anywhere you see serve, it's talking to slaves about slavery. You were not born to serve. None of us, we are born to serve or sacrifice all that nonsense. It's spirituality and religion that brought about this uh, serve. You serve gods or gods of the land, all that bullshit. No, we, we are not born to serve. We are born to live, explore, and enjoy life not to serve, then if you say you must serve, that person you serve, you serve must also serve you. If that person is not serving you, don't serve that person. Any person you're bowing to must also be bowing to you. If that person is not bowing to you, don't bow to that person. If you understand nature, you will know nobody is greater than you, no matter their rank, no matter their position. They are not greater than you, and that's why you should not be a slave of any man or any god. A god that is not worshipping you, you should not worship that god. Especially when you believe that that god is using you. That means that god is supposed to be paying you. Any god that is using you must be paying you. Those ministers of God who are criminals telling you that God sent them, God is using them, their god is supposed to be paying them, not you paying them because you are not the one using them. The reason why employers pay employees because employers are using employees. And if employers fail to pay employees in a developed country like America where they, they have the system of law that works, the employees will sue the employer and whatever they claim, that's what the employer must, must pay if they win the case. Say, so no man can serve two masters. So he's talking about slave and master's relationship. This thing is not talking about real life, natural life. It's talking about bondage, about slavery. Bible or Quran or Torah is a book, a manual for slaves, how to control slaves. So the master comes and said, no man, no slave can serve two masters. Nobody should be your master. If there is any master, let it be you. Say, everybody must not be masters. Who said that? If all of us are human beings, so what, what make you say, all of us must not? No, all of us can be. All of us can be leaders. That's how it's supposed to be. Nobody has two heads to be a master over others. Say, no one, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. And you see, when you read this, you see, when you're talking about him, a certain place, you see, he only take, talk, he, 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 he. She, uh, maybe certain, because it's men that wrote this. And the men that wrote this is men that put women under, they subjugated women. And you see, I, I think I asked one Christian woman that, was it a few days ago? I said, see, your Bible, that place you just quote, now it's talking about he, man, not woman. He said, no, man and woman, he's talking about woman. You know, it's not talking. If, he, if he's where he's talking about man and woman, he will say, you know, no man or woman, or no man and woman, or, or, or sons and daughter, or son and daughter. They show you, but this one, because they always speak to men. Because that's only when you subjugate women, then it is men that matters. Women don't matter. And you see many Africans believe that nonsense. Subjugating women, separating women from men is not African thing. It's not our ancestral thing. It's not part of our ancestral root. Subjugating women, separating women. And that's what most traditions you have today 
is doing because those traditions are not actually our real tradition. It's traditions, people that we are running from, from war, you know, they begin to put it just to survive. But it's not our original thing, which we're supposed to endeavor to know our originality. We lost our originality. And no matter how you try to hide it, say it's not true. Your suffering should teach you better. Look at your condition. Your tradition is not helping you to make your place a conducive place for you and your children to live. Even the money you are making is not helping you because those, those things are not what you need to live as a people. You don't need those nonsense tradition and the money. Those things, you, they, they are they're supposed to be serving you, not you serving them. They're supposed to be under you. You're supposed to be using them to better your life. For either he will hate one, the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and the mammon. See? So that's King James Version. When I read it, it's the contemporary English version. He said, You cannot be the slave, you see. He's talking about slave. You see, when they when they translate the Bible, say, okay, let me translate according to original word, you find that it's a slave manual. And there are different types of Bible. Not only there's even another Bible that the Americans use for slaves. And the slaves and the masters, they didn't have the same Bible. Slaves have their own Bible. And in their own Bible, that's where they will say them black people are people of oh, ha, ha, ha. They are cursed. And they are slaves. Slaves obey your masters. You know, even the harsh one, bow before them as though you are serving the Lord uh, God. Like when you read the first Peter chapter 2, verse 18 and 19, you see how terrible it is to be a Christian. How can you read that such thing? You say, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm serving it as I'm serving my master, my slave master, as I'm serving the Lord. My harsh slave master? You cannot be slave of two masters. You will like more. You will like one more than the other, or be more loyal to one than the other. You cannot serve both God and the money. So, mammon. Another word for mammon is money, which is God of riches. Mammon, God of riches. So they gave you two things, which to keep you under control, invisible or imaginary God in heaven and what they call God of riches. So you cannot pursue riches. If you want to see that God Almighty that will save you from slavery, you have to let riches go. Do you see why many of us Africans, we don't care about riches? Even though we have what it takes to make it even to be greater than all the richest people in the world, but there is this thing pulling us back, pulling us back. No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be evil. I don't want to do this. So because you cannot serve both God and the money. But these people gave you those both God and the money. They gave it to you, say you cannot serve two of them. You have to serve one. And the way they present God as God who will deal with you if you don't believe. God who will deal with you if you break his word. So you will try to be good to God and despise, <laughs> despise this, this mammon. The God of riches, he will mislead you. No, the love of money is the root of all evil. It's a lie. It's the love of God that is the root of all evil. God is evil. It's right there in their book. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7. God is evil. Evil begets evil. God said he creates evil. The first person that mentioned Bible or mentioned or planted the tree of evil is God, not devil. God says he is the one that does all those atrocities. They tell you, you cannot serve God and money. And that God <laughs> is consuming fire. That God don't want you to go beyond what is written, go beyond his law. He wants you to keep his law. Although you cannot see him, but he wrote a law for you. He started with the Ten Commandments. Then after that, they find out when I mean, these Ten Commandments does, did not hold. Then they have to give you a book for you to, to obey his will. In other words, he's dead. So, so long God is consigned to you, God is dead. That's why you have his book, which is called his will. 
the will is book or something written by a dead person. That's why Christians call, the, call it Holy Ghost. Ghost is the spirit of a dead person. Ghost is not a living spirit. It's not spirit that is real. No, it's a ghost, imaginary thing. Things people fear without seeing, although it cannot harm them, cannot do anything to them, cannot do anything for them, but they fear it exists. I used to fear that, have that fear. I don't. So uh, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's a lie. Fear, there's no wisdom in fear. Just as there's no knowledge in faith. Fear of God is the beginning of madness. That's why you see people that fear God do crazy things because they begin to hear voices telling them to do crazy things. The, the, is the is the fear that make them hear the voice that tell them use matches to kill spirit, use cane to flood spirit, <laughs> use oil as holy, use water as holy, book is holy. He says it's nonsense. What is our tradition as a people? I'm asking you, Africans. I'm asking you, Igbo man, Igbo woman. I'm asking you. Whatever part of Africa you come from, what is our tradition? If you are from Igbo tribe as I am, you know, the present day Igbo tribe, which is even, you know, it's a small part of us, but because Igbo means Ndibo, that is ancient people. So when I say Igbo people, I'm talking about the whole Africa. Do you get that now? It's not language, it's not tribe. Igbo is the whole Ndibo, the ancient people. What is our tradition as a people? Why do we have strange tradition today? Why do we have foreign tradition today? And many of us are claiming it as our own. You, you, we begin, our people begin to make that uh, tradition they have, which they cannot tell when it started. They will only tell you it's a long time ago. No, what is the date it started? What happened the time it started? You can trace it back. Our people were keeping that we had calendars before uh, uh, white people came. We have calendars and they were keeping records. They tell you that because you run away from where your record were, was were keep, kept and they stole them. When you go to Vatican, you see them. When you go to uh, some parts of Europe, they hide them there. They will never allow you to see them. They put them there, hiding your secret. That's why they want you to keep becoming worship, being worshippers, keep worshiping God, God, waiting for God to come, waiting for Jesus to come. Because if you begin to do research, you see some, uh, maybe all those, some archbishop in Catholic church that went to Vatican and maybe begin to, maybe they see some of the truth. <laughs> they say, no, this thing, but they are, they're already dug in, they're already in the pit. They will be there to death. Because if they come out, even the Catholic members and their own family, we, we deal with them. They will, kill, we, they will kill them. They make this tradition partially natural, but claim to be natural. It's not. Look at the traditions we have. People trying to put, oh no, it's this, it, it follow the sun, it follow the moon, but it's not. It's not. Nature answers to natural things. Nature doesn't answer to, answer to spirituality. Nature doesn't answer to religion. That's why you cannot marry them together. No matter how you try, you end up confusing yourself. So the nature is like the old wine and the spirituality or religion is like the new wine. No matter what it is, they will tell you that they, the old is better. They, they, they know old is not better. Old is better. Just as darkness is better than light. <laughs> they make you believe light is superior to darkness. I know the only thing that drives away darkness is light. Nothing can drive darkness away. Darkness is permanent. Light is temporal. You will have light off. If something happens now, this light go off. You cannot not even see me. Light will disappear. Darkness remains there. <laughs> You see, the thing about nature is this. Your common sense, we may, you see, we, we understand it easily. But when you come to spirituality and religion, you will go through a lot. You will perform some rituals. They are hiding knowledge with all those things to make sure you don't know. But it's supposed to be free thing. When you come to nature, nature don't cost anything. Anything that is costing us money is against nature. It is evil. That's what it means. 
the definition of evil simply means anything that is against nature is evil. It doesn't matter how good you feel about it. That's why it has side effects. You suffer for it. Got it? Okay. So, partially, people claim that their tradition is partially, or not a claim. I know that one. When you look at it, you know it's partially natural, but they claim it is natural. It's not. Just as people in spirituality, you say spirituality is natural. It's not. You are the one doing it. You are natural. But the nonsense you're talking about belief or imagination, that's bullshit. Talking about your ancestors being in, in, in one realm, you are consulting, then that's bullshit. Your ancestors are here. You are talking to yourself. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you see our people confusing our tradition with uh, spirituality, you know? You know, and they say that uh, it's hard to change kind of thing. Like in Igbo land, they say, our people say that, uh, what my forefathers did, I'm not the one that will do it. It, become, it becomes a taboo. So this, such mentality, such thought, we stop those people, we limit those people from reforming whatever tradition they, that was passed down to them. They won't change it. They will remain in it, smelling in it, stinking in it, and claiming it is our tradition. It is our culture. But how is it improving lives? It doesn't matter. That's what, no, you can change it. It's your civilization. It's your culture. It's your tradition. The your ancestors that made it does not have two heads. You are that your ancestors you're talking. The way it worked for them that time may not be all applicable for you today. So why can't you change it? Why can't you reform it to better yourself? I remember even... When I, I, I woke up newly, you know, I was talking about the masquerade in my village. I say, you know, let them use it as police because they said they were using it as police. You know, when we have cultural gathering or traditional gathering, masquerade is one that, you know, make, uh, make sure everything is going. People stay where they're supposed to stay. I said, okay. The dance, I stay like the dance till tomorrow. I said, the dance, why is it limited only to masquerade people that wear masks? People that don't wear masks can also dance it. Dress and dance it. They say, oh, this person can dance it. But you're supposed to know that marriage is not, I mean, masquerade is not our tradition, it's not our culture, it's a foreign culture, it's a foreign tradition. You don't know that white people gave us masquerade. It's not African thing, it's not black people thing. Even where you are living, the climate where you are living, see so how hot it is. You putting on sustain, supposed to teach you, it's not part of nature. It's not. You see how you sweat and gasping for air, so take it off. They tell you, oh, your ancestors were naked. You know, you don't know shit. Your ancestors were wearing clothes. But not dressing, wearing clothes under the hot, the heat of the sun. It doesn't, even in America here, during their summer, they go naked. But when they want to humiliate you, they tell you your people were naked. No, there's nothing wrong. You are born naked. If being naked or people walking around naked with their breasts dangling as women and, their, and the men, their penis dangling, it's natural. There is nothing wrong about it. <laughs> uh, say your God is only wise God. So why did he create you with clothes? Why did he, 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 keep, he keep letting you come in naked? He keep having children naked. Stupid God. He say he's perfect. everything he does is perfect. But you have to chop off uh, some part of your body. For what? You circumcise your men, <laughs> you, you, you some circumcise their women too. For what? But you say, God made me, God made us, God created us. Stupid God. <laughs> Many of us, we don't want to change the so-called tradition we say we inherited. We let it be there. And that's why we are not fighting for what we had before our forefathers. See, when I say before our forefathers, those of you from Africa are supposed to know the difference between our ancient African ancestors and our forefathers. Our forefathers is what I will call post-slavery ancestors. They are the ones that were forced to become Christians. So that one that ones that forced to become Muslims. So they don't even have our originality. They don't know our originality because they have been converted. 
and the tradition they pass down to you has been already dented with Quran or with the Bible. That's why you see some Africans, when they read something in the Bible or Quran, they say, see, it's the word of God. It's talking about us. Yeah, because you have slept, they copy it from your people. So they put some of the things that is in your culture and tradition there. When you did this, they say, see, we are Hebrew Israelites. We are slaves because of the wrong we did. God said we will be slaves. The sheep will take us from, but you know, they, they, they go and they embrace that cause in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Then they embrace the, the cause also in Genesis, talking about the, the son, Ham, the son of Noah. He said they are the one. You are the one. So you become black because you are cause. And they put it in the Ecclesiastes, he said, do not uh, uh, me. The sun hit me and I become black. No, I am not dark. I'm not black because of sun. There are Africans born in America here, conceived and born in America here that are darker than Chaco or as Chaco. It's not the sun. They, they, they taught you that because what they teach you in school also. Yeah, you believe that nonsense. And that's why it is hard for you to see you are superior to them. You keep seeing that they are superior to you and you are inferior. You say it will never, there's no way it can be reversed. Who said that? There were times we were ruling them. It can happen again. But we didn't treat them like animals. We helped them. Taught them how to battle, taught them how to build things before they decided to become envy or envious and come after us. Instead of paying us to help them, they now say they will take it by force because we don't have army, we don't have uh, weapons. There's no need for you to have those things. We were not corrupt people. We were civilized people. Corrupt people are the ones that have military or soldier. The, what is the work of soldiers? Invading other people's land, raping their women, killing their men, and taking their resources. But today, you see, I, mean, I, I have I army mean, clothes now. You know how we... <laughs> I saw we do stuff. You see this one? I have it right. I wear a lot of my. I have boot car. Even my car, they, I cover it with a uh, army color. Huh? But our people don't know these things, and they are educated because even in our schools, in our higher institutions, they didn't teach us about us. Our own school. You see, our people saying, especially Igbo people. Our language will not die. Our language will die so long we are going because we don't have school where we are using our language to teach. Our language is secondhand in our schools. They flog us for speaking our language and they praise us for speaking English. Wake up, my people. You are forefathers since when? When you're talking about your forefathers, give me date. Our forefathers. When which our forefather is talking, I mean our enslaved forefathers. You're talking about our enslaved uh, ancestors. I'm not talking about our enslaved ancestors. No, I'm talking about our great ancient Afri African ancestors in the uh, in the olden days. <laughs> uh, so they, they will see the grammar. In the antiquity, I mean, <laughs> antiquity. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about post-slavery or post-colonization uh, ancestors. No. And that's where we are now. We are still in this post-slavery era, post-colonization era. At the Berlin Council, they made the meet, they divided Africa. And that's the system that is still on today. It has not been abolished. They said they abolish slavery. No, they changed it into colonialism. That's where we stay in today. Our, our ancestors, our forefathers, you're talking, they are post slavery ancestors, post, <laughs> post um, colonialism or colonialism ancestors. They don't know our true history. They don't. Where do we come from? They find it in the Bible. In the Bible. So masquerade that you call our tradition. I see even some of us that say we are waking, it's hard for them to reason this. They say, no, it's our tradition. What are you saying? I've tried to try to explain it to them certain times. I'll be like, let me leave them, let them keep growing because that's why I keep encouraging us grow in knowledge. 
You see how today I, I don't say anymore we are gods and goddesses. I used to preach that. I used to say that. But it's a concept which Africans used to see their ancestors, right? Which some people say. But in nature, we are above gods and goddesses. We are above them. We are natural. We are human beings. We are kind of people. There is no force. We are natural people. There is no force greater than nature. Nothing can change nature. Nature is permanent. Very. Masquerade is a cult and it's men's cult. Other some people, they have women masquerade also. But like where I came from, most places in Africa, masquerade is men's cult. It's a cult. For you to belong, I think every boy from the age of 12, that's when you are matured to be initiated. Is it not the same thing they do in the church they call confirmation? Think, that's where I came 12 years, you have to be of age to be initiated, to be confirmed. It's a cult. Church is a cult. Spirituality is a cult. It's a cult. Where the mansion come from? It's cult. Africans started all that cult stuff. Before now, they brought this mask with and that one wearing things to mask themselves when good eyes. You see how they wear a jacket. You see, I have my jackets I wear because it's, it's winter now, right? You see, Africans don't need that. The same way Africans don't need masquerade, but you say, okay, then look back to Egypt. If you find the history of Egypt or Kemet, you see that they, they, when they draw something, when they are talking about wisdom, there is animal they will use and put it, this person have head of that animal. Or like it says, they use serpent, it's talking about resurrection or wisdom, which is why Jesus tell you what, be wise as serpent. But Christianity thought us, oh, serpent is evil, it deceived us. No, serpent taught us what we know. Serpent taught us to wear clothes. Serpent taught us to hide from God. <laughs> because God is evil. God comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Masquerade. In masquerade, you see how they separate men and women. That's what makes it evil. It's not part of our culture. It's not part of nature. Nature is our culture. Science is our culture. Not masquerade. And you see our young men today, you see sometimes when I'm listening to this pericoma, oh, because I was brought up in it. When young men in our land they hear that, women don't do that, it's our men. And you see, the, that's the same thing our people do in the church. Is they, is they do in the church. But when white people wear their own mascot or their own masquerade, they don't do like you. Because our people begin to believe in so there is supernatural, there is this. They started cult, which is called spirituality. Spirituality is a cult. It's a belief system, but it was not forced on anyone. You believe that one? Okay. But religion was forced on people because it's organized. But spirituality is not organized or was not organized. How about kingship? That's another one our people think is part of our tradition or culture, no? It's a shame that we claim to be wise, yet we have one man controlling us or ruling over us as king. Kingship is foreign culture, foreign tradition to us. It's not our thing. What we had was called the council of elders. Elders and every family produced elders that represent them when the village or the community Gathers. When you look like Nigeria, they are like in their court, court system, right? They still sometimes they recognize those elders. They will tell you what the elders say. Because that's our originality, elders. Not one man controlling the whole people. When you're talking about king, what they they, they now brought when they brought kingship to us, remember. In England, they still have king and queen to show you where he came from. They're the one that colonized us, they're the one that enslaves us, enslaved us. Yes, Queen Elizabeth. And our people even respect Queen Elizabeth than any other queen. Even they are <laughs> have you have you seen the queen? Have you seen the Queen Elizabeth? I'm going to London to see the Queen. We are worshiping that idiot. 
<laughs> Kingship. Mm. So when I was watching that Nigerian movie, because Nigerian movie is full of bullshit, that's where they bring Africa down. That's where because they can add anything to make money. They can add anything to make money. And the white people we like it when you act against yourselves. Okay, yeah, it's good that one acting it. Yeah, they tell us in the name of Jesus, they are they are gods will run away. In the name of Jesus, their problem is solved. Okay, it's well, okay, yeah, let it be so. Is it hereditary or rotational? King, the king you have in your village, is this, you know, some people still say, yeah, you know, imagine a one family will producing king, princes and princesses, and your own family be producing servants, slaves for that king. <laughs> Does he have two heads? It's a shameful thing that you claim to be a people and you have a king over you. It means you are slaves. You are subject to those that king. What our people used to have when we have council of elders, we have the leader of the youths or the leader of the hunters. That's where you see brave men because it must be your elders. Elders don't do heavy things no more because their bone is aging. So it's the young men. They want to go. They hear that one animal is disturbing their their crop or that. It's okay. So so that we're gonna go to kill all those animals. There we go. They weren't killing anyone or another. Our people were were modern were murderers, as they taught us to believe. Our people weren't enslaving one another, as they taught us to believe. Our people we are we are we are civilized people. It is uncivilized people that invade other people's land to take their thing. Civilized people have everything they need. They don't need any external help. That's civilized people. And that was our ancient African ancestors. They didn't need any help from anyone. They can go anywhere. You remember, you hear when they tell you about Musa? I think a king from Mali, right? How he went to Mecca with gold, you know? He, he, he crippled the economy of all the, all the people anywhere he's passing. Gold, everything. That's Africa. See Ghana, gold like water. And Africa, everywhere they have everything that they didn't need any help from anyone. It is the evil ones that invaded and begin to teach them war, begin to teach them how to kill one another. Kingship. So because they tell you, oh, king, you know, these are, but in the kingship now, when we are growing up, they say it is God that makes king. It is God that chooses the king. Oh, the gods of the land, the one that chooses the king. That is wrong. It means you don't have your own brain. Gods of the land are who? When you're talking about gods of your land, it's supposed to be your dead ancestors. Those your dead ancestors don't exist in any spiritual world or in any spiritual realm. No. You are those your ancestors you're talking about. Somebody said, tell me who, who was your first ancestor. Number one, I'm not the one that tell you about first ancestor. I cannot tell you that. It's like telling me the first people. I can never tell you that. You know, these are the first people that existed. No, unless you're talking about all the black people. You don't tell me, you know, it's people from that uh, part of Africa. They are the first people. Bullshit. <laughs> Then you're talking about four. Who is the first? You're asking me who is the first. You are the one that believe that is that it's like telling me to prove that God does not exist. I didn't tell you I believe God exists. You are the one that believe God exists. So if you prove God exists, I'm already telling you God does not exist. I'm the living evidence. God does not, God cannot show up because God does not exist. Your life also is a living evidence. All your prayers, God can never show up. So you're asking me who was the first ancestor? How do we come into existence? Idiot. Your parents still show you how we came into existence, although they lied to you. When you were little, you ask them, Mommy, how did I come into existence? They, they tell you, no, I vomited you. God gave you to me. Which God? Our people, not that we are not even teaching our children about sex, how to have sex. Well, our children are lying from somewhere else, and that's why everything scattered. And we claim we train our children where we teach them the truth. No, we didn't. You, we can on, can we teach our children about sex? How to have sex? They watch us have sex. See this how we, and you have, is this how it's done? Can we do that? You say no, we corrupt them. Who said that? 
And these are the people that believe maybe going to heaven or people that believe in heaven say they will not go with this body. And uh, people that believe in reincarnation. So why are you hiding it? What of if that, that's your, your forefather that came back? Why are you hiding it? I'm just saying it because it's talking about naked truth. Where do we have naked truth? When you say that naked truth, they hate you. Like what I'm saying now. Whose parents talk, even today, it's hard for you to talk, even talk about sex with your children. That's why my daughter, I'm talking with, about sex with her, masturbation, sex, all that thing. Don't tell me one boy is driving you crazy. No, don't depend on any boy or any woman. Live your life. If they don't accept you, don't accept them, period. So I'm happy she says she's still a virgin. Okay, but if not, you want to fuck, fuck. It's natural. We were born to fall. That's naked truth. He says it's not true. You're a pervert. So you that is not pervert, how is your life? Why are all those divorce you're having and suffering in your family, suffering and smiling? You come and show us picture when you dress up with your new clothes. Yeah. When you are crying, you don't show us that one. Then after you divorce, you say, you know, I've been passing through a lot. That man is a monster. He's evil. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Because he don't have money as you expected anymore, or he has thrown you away. He don't care about you going after other women. But most women are letting their men fucking around because he's providing for them. Period. That's why your husband can fix your car, buy you a car, because he knows you are not troubling him. If you begin to trouble him, <laughs> then he will too. <laughs> you will see we no longer be buying those things. So excuse me, talking to me like that. It's maybe I will a couple of <laughs> See, honey, oh, my father needs so, 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 so. He said, Oh, no, my goose have not arrived. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but they will not tell you the naked truth. This is why I'm telling you that this because I have been made free. The knowledge of factual truth has made me free. I'm no longer afraid of dying. At least I've crossed 50 years. So if I die now, I do not die. Any. I've, 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 there's nothing I, I lose. At least I'm happy that I will die without God, I will die without Jesus, I will die without a fear of heaven, a fear of losing heaven, I will die without fear of going to hell. I will just die naturally and come back naturally. Continue my life. Life goes on. Life is eternal, your natural life. No God can give you eternal life. No Jesus can give you eternal life. So you see people that claim that kingship is their tradition they begin to debate now before we believe it's hereditary it comes from one place or other then now it's rotational when people begin to value money so now you see that they begin to have power tussle who is who so the who is who is somebody that have money if you don't have money they say can you do what it may do can you do what it takes to become a king can you sponsor your offer all this bullshit they hang on it to intimidate poor people but when you're talking about in nature all you need is intelligence Intelligent person, all of you are supposed to be intelligent people working together, coming together, not one person. Because you have money now, you intimidate other people. Oh, because I cannot afford something, I'm no longer a human being, you are better than me, I have to shut up. How about wicked rules? They begin, they begin to make wicked rules to suit them. The rules they make for the masses is not for them. Because So they know how to bend it. They know how to go around that rules they make. But you don't. They can send you out of the village because of small things you did. But they do more than that. Nobody they believe it. They kill somebody, no investigation. But other people will kill. Or maybe some they are set up. They just say, yeah, you kill it. Yeah. They send you to exile. And the same people that come from a place where they send somebody that kills somebody, accused of killing somebody or doing bad things to Azai. They are the same people that believe that they were killing people. No. Because no matter how they strip you your identity, there are still some particles of feet that are still there. You can see to show you you are not like that. When they tell you your ancestors were killing twins, you believe that nonsense. You are stupid. They are the people that kill your ancestors, telling you now that your ancestors were killing twins. If killing twins were bad, so why did they have to kill people? 
killing to wins or killing people is this is bad bad you kill my ancestors and teach me that my ancestors were killing people that's why you kill them <laughs> so yeah, i should trust you i should believe you and our people trust and believe them because they're for us i've said this before one man reign over all that is evil it's not natural in nature all of us have one head one head Nobody should be over your life. Nobody should be above you. That you have something I don't have doesn't make me lesser than you. There are things I have that you don't have. Oh no, if, I don't, if you don't know how to speak English, if you don't know, if you are not attended university, you will not be our leader. That's nonsense. Look at our life today. Look at our places today. Is it not educated people that have been ruling us? How, buddy? How is our condition now? But it's still that say, oh, these people will become the Chinese of Africa. Bullshit. We are greater than Chinese people. We are greater than Asians. We are greater than Americans. We are greater than Europe. But we try to be like them now. That's why they think they're still controlling us. You become subjects. When you become a subject, you are no longer intelligent. That's why blind faith, it does not make you intelligent. It means you are still stupid. When you sub, sub, subject yourself or subdue yourself to any man or any God, you are not intelligent. You have allowed them to rubbish your intelligence. You are no longer living as a human being. That's why they call you sheep, subject. You are no longer being human being. Human beings, we are not born to be subjects. They we are not born to serve. Hi. So you see the people that say they value their culture and tradition. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now they have put money over everything. Money over tradition. Money over culture. If you don't have money, you are nonsense. Our tradition and the money. <laughs> Which one is raining now? Money. See somebody that was in the village. They call him nobody. He went to America, or he went to Europe, or went to Asia, and make money. Boom. Everybody. Even elderly people washing car for him. Elderly people, elderly people praising him, clapping for him. He got your... He get chieftaincy title. They be calling him. Some of them have more than one chieftaincy title. They believe in one man, one wife. They, chieftain, they go to this time, they give them chieftaincy title. They go to their friend's town, they give them chief dance title. What do you mean? He give the king's money <laughs> with his cabinet. Okay, we're crying you. Money over everything. If you don't have money, they don't consider you as somebody that's doing any good work. They don't need your wisdom, bullshit. And that's why we are not prospering as a people. Money over everything. Money over our tradition. Because our tradition is fake. And the money also is a tool for control. You don't know that. So the question I want to ask you, where is our own money? They say you cannot serve God and money. No, money is God. And money is the God everyone is serving today. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, uh, star, money, 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 money. But this shut down. You see, this thing is supposed to teach you the coronavirus, uh, the pandemic shut down that shut the whole world down. Your money, all, every money was useless that time. No matter how much you have, it was useless. Yet you won't, you won't learn. Or when you die, you are buried, supposed to teach you that, listen, these things you are holding is not the main thing. It's not part of nature. It is what man made for deception and control. When you say, no, money is important. Which money are you talking about? Where is our own money, Africans? We had money before white people came. And our money, there was no interest or usury tax in it. No. You get, say, give me one, uh, uh, one kobo. You bring one kobo back. That, no interest. It's part of wickedness, interest. You, uh, I loan you money. You're going to pay me with interest. That is part of evil they brought. Your ancestors weren't doing that. You see, in our place, people will use their land to borrow money from somebody. They will not lose that land. That family will hold it until even if that person die. If his children or his children's children, 
raise the money and bring it. They will give them their land back. Today, try it now, <laughs> borrow money. Well, it has passed the time we said, you cannot get that land back, it's gone. They sell it, make money off it. They don't even check whether there is any mineral in that land. All they know is land I sell it for building house. House. See, see the house where I build a mansion. Where? And some of them, after building it, that house, be, so after some years, nobody will be there. How about Ezego of Ihiela? Somebody showed his house. Nobody goes there. The wife and kids, I think maybe they don't go to village anymore because she may not allow them to go. But look at your village, you will see there are some buildings that used to be great, you know, you used to see it as, oh, when I make money, I will build this type of house. <laughs> the man died, everything died. Just like the companies we are having in Nigeria or in Africa. When the main person dies, that thing dies. That's it. Because we don't have a working system that is our ass. We are, we are like refugees or like slaves who are fighting to dominate one another. We cannot fight to dominate our slave masters. It's ourselves. It's called safe fate. They taught us that. Mm. Where is our money? You can say it. Where is our God? The God we are serving in our land today is not our God. When some of you say, ah, you are talking about God of Israel. That's the God you're talking about. It's not our God. You are talking about God of Israel. It's not our God. Where is our own money? Where is our own God? Where is it? Our money, they say, it's ancient now. It's no longer in vogue. You know, it's this one. Dollar, dollar. We lost everything. We are slaves. You cannot refute what I'm saying. God is not helping us. <laughs> Have you seen any God to help us as a people? No. Whether it's God of your ancestors or God of Israel, whatever God is, it is. That God is not helping us. You are the one even helping that God. You are the one feeding the God. You are the one pouring libation to that God or serving that God. That God is not helping us. The work of that God is to cause somebody to be killing good and far for it or seeing things. You see, most, most of our native daughters is making things for people to go abroad and make money. Why, why can't they make it in our village? Huh? You're bragging. Yeah, okay, Malaysia. Dubai. Useless people. And the prophets of God, anointed of God, ministers of God, they are all of them money over everything. God is not, there's no God that is helping us as a people. Anyone that says God is helping us, that person is stupid, no matter who that person is. Money is not even helping us. Look at if money helps us, like Biafra. Ibo people have money to get Biafra, to bribe any government or anything to get it. They will do it. But it's not helping us. <laughs> because it's not our money. It's not helping us. It can never help us. It's helping them. What is our helper? What is helping us? Remember what I said. I did not say who is our helper. I did not say who is helping us. I said what? is our helper nature it is called intelligence it's only intelligence that can help or intelligence that can help us until we turn to become intelligent people again we will remain slaves and that's why we not fight to free ourselves because slaves have robbed their intelligence they don't want them. so any slave that showed that sign of intelligence they put them down they kill them because when you regain your consciousness, you want to escape that plantation. You want to escape that slavery. You want to be free. You want to break the chains and free yourself. Nature, intelligence, what is helping us? Oh, I mean, what can help us? Science. Remember I say, first, nature. Secondly, science. 
And that's the only way you can understand nature is with science. Nature, science comes from nature. And that's why all this medicine, what you call voodoo, all those things are part of nature. But our people end up spiritualizing it, then they mess it up. Science is knowledge. Nature is intelligence. Science is knowledge. And when you're talking about science or knowledge, you're talking about innovation and invention. I'm not talking about speaking grammar. I'm not talking about getting some education. No. I'm not talking about joining scientists or saying I'm a scientist because I went to school. No. I'm talking about science knowledge you gain by doing your own research you know doing your own investigation reasoning all that you know you came up with quality decision that works and you you can prove it it works even a poor illiterate man with intelligence is better than educated man or educated people put together all of them is better far better and greater than them because with that intelligence he can create things. He can make things that will make life better. That's what the slaves, the African slaves in America used to invent the things you have today. Every invention in America was by black people. They were slaves, but they were intelligent. <laughs> they can't stop them. Mathematics, they taught you mathematics. How about Chico B? I want to do research about because we've forgotten talking about him. The man that showed the whole world that we are the one that give the world mathematics. Nobody could solve it. He said he was taking bath and he came to him. It's in us. It is part of us. We are one with the nature. Everything in nature, the sun, the, everything, they are there to equip you with the knowledge you need. And it's free of charge. You don't need any school to learn what you need to live. School hide knowledge. They limit you. That's what the, all this learning institution, institution of learning, and the institution of religion, institution of all of them. We have made to limit us. We are no longer living as human beings. We are living as slaves, enslaved people, cage people, um, uh, program people, condition people. As you see, what is happening in America? Wow. Even when you are sick, you call out from your work. You'll be so worried. I don't want to lose my job. Some people they take, they take off. They wrote it. They, it was approved, signed, and approved. Okay, you can take days off. They still come back to work. They say no, your name is not on the day. Oh, I forgot. I <laughs> because that's what they have programmed. They have programmed us like that. I used to do two jobs. Now I'm doing one job. I was like, no, I'm gonna get another job. I was like, no, I'm not getting it. I must tra train myself to live humanly. Not like yeah, I, I found my I, I, I found myself among my people. We are slaves, but I can survive better. I don't have to encourage the system or be according to how they want me to be. I can show them that I'm intelligent. I can live my life well, even with little I have. Why am I competing with anyone? It's like you are driving in the highway. You see a car. You want to um, race drag with them. <laughs> and after you see they make their exit and you still have a long way to go you see you just wasted your time or risk your life accident would have happened i learned these things driving too because i i like nice cars and when i'm driving i don't want any car to pass me so when i was driving that infinity you need, you need to see how i used to speed or the lexus but now i bought this honda this honda is not running as i want <laughs> Oh, come on, I said, come on. But when he peaked, boom, I don't know. <laughs> mm. What we need is to do our own research, dig up our truths, dig up our ancient truth. It is not found in any institution of learning. We have to go back. You see why people, they keep coming to Africa to dig, but our people are not digging. What our people is after is money, money over everything. Even the so-called, what they, we call our tradition, money over it. Is somebody that have money today that can become the king of your town. 
Somebody that have money that will be giving chieftaincy title. Mm. We have to do our own research. What we need is research, my people. We don't need to repent from anything. We are not sinners. We don't need God. We are above God. We don't need heaven. Heaven does not exist. All we need today as a people is to do our own research. And do not limit yourself to the elders in your village because those elders also believe in the Bible or Quran. They don't know anything. And that you see what they, they, they even say. They say that somebody that traveled, you know, is wiser than an elder. That's wrong. You know what it means to be an elder? It means that elder also have traveled. And that elder can reason well. And But today, oh no, you traveled. You are wiser than my father. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Our future is rooted in our past. <laughs> Do you hear what I just said? Our future, our great future is rooted in our great past. If you don't know your past, you will never know your future. And you will not work today to have that future because you don't know your past. Slaves don't know their past. They are limited. They, they, stop, they, are, they are hindered from going after knowing their past. So the present that the slave master gives to them is what they are using to build their future and they will never see that future. That's why it's called dream. <laughs> Green are never come true. Our future is rooted in our past. Those who don't know the past are slaves in the present. People that don't know their past, they are comfortable with being slaves. I'm a slave of God. Leave me alone. Believe what you believe. I am the slave of Christ. Leave me alone. Believe what you believe. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm proud to be that. Yeah. And so what? It's better when I die. I find out there's no God. I did not lose anything. No, you lost a lot. You lost your brain, which is above God, which is greater than God. Had it been you engage your brain, you will see that God is under your feet. You are not inferior to white people. Those who don't know their past are slaves in the present and don't care about their future. The future they want to have is the future of the oppressor. The future they want to have, Africans, the future they want to have, because they don't know their past. They are slaves in the present. So the future they want to have, we want to, our village will be like London. Our village will be like America. It will be like New York. It will be like China, Beijing. That's the future they want to have. They don't have future as a people. They have future as slaves. They don't know their past. They don't care about their past. So they don't even care about their future. The future they care about is the future of their own slave masters. They want to be like their slave masters. They want to dress like their slave masters. They want to do anything, everything as their slave masters. They become consumers, no longer builders, that their great African ancestors were. And for those of you that have Bible or still say have say there is Bible, okay. Genesis chapter 11, 1 to 6 will teach you. Even white people confess that when you are one, nothing you propose to do, nothing you imagine to do, nothing you plan to do will be taken away from you. Not you become unstoppable. That's why they don't want us united. And all these traditions you have today is still separating us. All this religion you have in our land still separating us. All these institutions they build in our land still separating us. That even in the small thing we can handle, we are looking up to them, the white people, to come and they help us. We can't help ourselves. Let us wake up as a people. Let us know ourselves so that we can live well, live humanly. Gordon. Mm -hmm.